Hello, welcome to the mobile assessment webinar video. In this video, we will focus on how to create and use the assessment workflow. To begin, go to your model editor page. You can navigate there by accessing the other apps button in maps. Once in model editor, go to the mapping button category. Click on the plus icon in the middle window to create a new button. This will open up a window where you can enter the button's name. Once you have the name entered, click the Create button. This will open up the window to edit the button. At the top, you can see the name, which can be changed at any time if needed. Below that is the description. The description communicates the button's function to others. Next, choose your button's icon and color. For button type, you will choose assessment. This will add assessment steps and stamp attributes. Let's start with the assessment steps. This section is where you can add or remove steps of the workflow. To add a step, click the plus icon to the right. This will add a row with a pick list to choose what type of step it is. You will have the choice between photo, attribute, set location, or photo group. For this example button, I may want to confirm the location of the pole to start my assessment, so I would choose set location. Starting at the top left of the new step, you have the number, which corresponds to the step number. Moving to the right is the step title. If you change the step title in the text area below, the change will be reflected above. The symbol or icon to the right shows what the step type is. The six dots will allow you to move the steps to rearrange the order once more steps have been added. The trash can icon will delete the step. And lastly, the arrow to the far right will collapse or expand the step details. Moving to the details of the step, we have already gone over the step title. Below this is a section to add a prompt text for your field worker. This is text the worker will see that will be useful in letting them know what is needed during this step of the assessment. The After This Step dropdown controls how the assessment proceeds based on inputted data. Lastly, there is an Add an Image button, which is useful to add reference photos for your field workers. This will be useful when we get to the photo steps. For now, Let's collapse the detail window and add another step to keep building our assessment. To do this, we will return to the Add a New Assessment Step dropdown and select the step type. For this example, we will enter an attribute next. In the Details window for an attribute, you can use the dropdown to choose what attribute to enter. When you choose your attribute, the software will update the title to match this attribute. If you do need to change the title, you can still do so. The attribute will remain in parentheses. Next, we will enter the prompt text. There will also be a checkbox to make the step required or not. If the step is required, the worker will not be able to move on until data is entered. Checking the box will add a red asterisk next to the step name. Once all the details are entered for that step, we can return to the dropdown to add another step. Let's now add a photo step for the tag the worker just entered. We will go to the dropdown and select photo. This will open up the photo step details. Again, we can enter the title and prompt text. Now, because this is a photo step, it may be useful to have an example photo for the worker to reference when in the field. You can click the add an image button and find an example photo to use as reference. The photo capture types refer to how the image will be captured. If the worker is using the mobile device to enter the data and take photos, select device. If the worker is using an external camera to take the photos, select external camera. The photo classification can be entered to show what the photo is. Again, you can choose if the photo is required and for photos, you can also have the option to have a compass displayed in the assessment window. Because you can now dictate when a photo is being taken, 
We can classify the photos from the field instantaneously by selecting the appropriate chip attribute to add. Let's return to our step dropdown and add a few more steps to create a more complete assessment. For this example, we will want the field worker to identify if the pole is grounded. So I will choose the attribute option and under the attribute dropdown, I will select grounded. Again, I will fill out the prompt text for the field worker and make this a required step. Because this attribute is set up as a checkbox, I will have pick list options. Now, I will be able to dictate how the assessment branches depending on if the pole is grounded or not. We will come back to these drop downs in a few minutes. Also, because this is a pick list option, we can allow for multiple selections. If we check that box, another option to allow for duplicate selections will appear. For grounding, we probably don't need multiple selections, so we will leave these boxes unchecked. Moving to the bottom, we have pick list calls. Setting pick list calls will add attributes based on selections during this step. Here we can say if we choose yes, or the pole is grounded, we can add a grounded attribute and set that to be true. Once you have your selections, you can hit the plus icon to add the call attribute. We can also add an option for if the pole is not grounded by adjusting pick list option and call attribute value. You can have as many of these as you need and to remove one, just click the X to the right of the attribute. Now let's add another photo step for the grounding. Go through and enter the necessary information in the step details. Because grounding may not always exist, we will leave the required box unchecked. For this example, we will add a few more steps before ending the assessment. We may want to look for who is attached to the pole. For that, we will add an attribute step and choose to enter the company. Because this attribute is a drop-down type, there will be an option to choose which pick list, if you have multiple, to search from. Also, we will want to allow for multiple and duplicate selections. Now that more steps have been added, let's return back to our grounded step to direct the assessment based on what data is present. If the poll is grounded, we would want a photo, so continue to next prompt is good. However, if the selection is no, we may not need a photo, so we could skip and go directly to the step where the worker needs to identify attachers, or step 6. We have looked at set location, attribute, and photo steps. So let's look at the last type of photo group. Photo groups allow you to ask for multiple photos in one step. Enter the title, photo prompt, and classification. You can also check if the photo is required or not. Once the information is correct, click the plus icon to add the photo. At this point, you can also add the chip attribute to classify the photo ahead of time. Return back to the photo prompt and add as many photos as you need for the workflow. If that is the last step of the assessment, select End the Assessment from the Step dropdown. The next section is Stamped Attributes. These are attributes that can be added at certain events. If you click the plus icon, it will open up a row to enter the trigger event and the attribute to add. You can have an attribute be added at the creation of a new node, selecting an existing node, or when completing an assessment. For example, if you wanted to add a field completed attribute when you complete an assessment, you select the completing an assessment option. Then under attribute, look for field completed. Choose yes or no from the pick list. And if you need to overwrite the attribute if it is already existing on the node. Once those details are added, click the plus icon to add the stamped attribute. This shows that on completion of an assessment, the field completed box will be checked. If the assessment is finished, or you just want to test it at any time, click save in the top right, and enter the sandbox to test your assessment. The sandbox will open up a mobile view so you can see exactly what your fielder will see. 
Here, you can test the workflow. Use the dropper to insert or assess a location. The mobile assessment window will open on the right side of the screen. In mobile, it will take up the entire screen. You can use the fast forward button at the top right to put the workflow in fast forward mode, which will prevent having to hit next after certain assessment steps. You can also click the upward and downward arrows in the far right corner to expand the full assessment form to display all steps. Once you set the settings you wish, you are able to move through the assessment. Here, I can set the location of the map or use a GPS, and once I am happy with the placement, I can hit next to go to the next step. I can now enter the tag information and select the owner. Hitting next will go to the tag photo. Here you can see the compass we selected to be in the window. The field worker should take the photo of the item, then click the camera to mark that photo done. Next we have our grounding question. Here, depending on my selection, the assessment will go to different steps. If I select yes, it will take me to the photo option. If I go back and select no, it will take me to the step to identify the attachers. For the identification step, because we selected multiple and duplicate selections, we can add a cat V as well as two telcos. You can use the six dots on the left to rearrange attachers or click the X to remove an option. Our last step is the photo group. Here you can see we have three photos to take. In this case, two are required and the third is only needed if it applies. Once the field worker takes the photo of the specified shot, the worker should click the camera icon for that shot only. Doing this process will be dropping a time bucket per shot instead of the usual time bucket per location. Once that shot is marked as complete, the field worker will take the next shot and then mark that as done by clicking the camera icon. As soon as all required shots are taken, the next button will appear to move on. After the final step, a closed mobile assessment button will appear. Click this button to end the assessment. You can select the edit tool to see the data entered during the assessment, and you can use the assessment button to edit any previously entered data. After the test, close the sandbox page to return to the model editor. Make any tweaks if necessary and save the assessment. Be sure to add the button to the proper tool set so that your field personnel will be able to access the tool easily. This wraps up the mobile assessment webinar video. Please refer to our mobile assessment document for more instruction. And if you have other questions, contact support at catapultengineering.com. Thanks for watching.